I want to ask you some questions about these divides that I see within the trans community, so to speak, which is not even a term or not even a real thing, the, you know, community as if everyone's mm. hanging out together and go to meetings and stuff like that. So you have, you have gender dysphoria, right? Is that fair to say, or had it or? Yeah. Okay. So I would say have. Yeah. Okay. So can you, so I guess first, can you explain like how that works in terms, because there are people who will just say, I am trans or I am a, like if I said right now, I am a woman, like I'm now trans, that makes me transgender or something, right? Cause I identify my identity, yeah. my internal view of myself is I'm a woman now, but that's very different than someone who, than gender dysphoria, which is, you know, a, it, a mental illness, it's fair to call it where, um, you know, uh, and this is stuff that Robert Sapolsky has talked about and I've done videos, you know, kind of drawing a lot from his lectures. People with gender dysphoria have brains that are more similar to the sex that they identify with. There is an amazing study that was shown that people who are transgender have differences in the size of some of these regions as a function, not of what their sexual phenotype is, but of what they've always said, I have always felt like or whatever. They have the region, the size of the, what I always felt like I was, rather than what they actually are, bringing in this possibility that what transgender is about is not somebody thinking that they have the wrong sex, but it's somebody who's gotten the wrong body. And that's like a, that's like a, a real thing. So that grounds it in reality. Whereas if I just say yeah. I'm trans, yeah. It's just kind of now an identity thing. Yes, so although you kind of talk about yeah, just what your although the are on reason that. the whole brain thing it can be seen in two different ways. It can be seen for trans people will say, uh, "We our brains align more with uh, the gender we identify as." Um, but there's also studies on um, how homosexuals their brains align more with uh, I believe who they're attracted to or something. Yes. Yeah, um, so true. so so because. I'm a female who is attracted to females. You could argue one or the other, right? These areas are very pertinent to sexual behavior. And what we will see is that one of them is more involved in male sexual behavior, one more in female sexual behavior on the average. There are gender differences in the size of these areas. There is one landmark study that everybody learned about about 15 years ago showing that there's a difference in the size of one of these regions depending on your sexual orientation. And, and to me, the one that's based on Actual, an actual fact, right, on sex or on sexuality, to me that one makes sense versus the other. Um, I also just think, yeah, I don't know. There's a lot to unpack in what you just said, though. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's kind of like how I see that. Um, but then, so we look at the word trans itself and <clears throat> trans, or which is short for transgender, transgender is an umbrella term with like, I have, let's just say hundreds, we could say hundreds, yeah. hundreds of different identities are thrown um, under that one umbrella. So while uh, historically it used to be a transsexual, a person that um, transitions from female to male or male to female, though, to be clear, you can't change your sex. But what we do is we take, you know, um, hormones to uh, change our secondary sex characteristics as best as we can so that we can, you know, re-enter society appearing as the opposite sex, despite the fact that our sex doesn't change. So that was the whole point of it for as long as I can remember. But now, because of queer theory and postmodernism and just all this stuff that's happening, it's, it's just been uh, watered down to mean whatever you want and also nothing. It's meaningless, honestly. Yeah, right. uh, so it's kind of frustrating because, yes, I'm somebody who's always been dysphoric. Did it get better by transitioning? Sure. Did it disappear? No, it did not. Um, but you know, I don't see the word trans. I don't, that's not, um, something that like I connect with as far as it, it, um, describes me necessarily. Although I understand how I fit under the trans man category in a way, I get that. But right now what we're seeing is people that believe in, uh, this sort of like oppressor and oppressed class. And so anybody, anybody that, that believes in queer theory, and thinks that, you know, um, yeah, like the uh, being a white cis het, uh, male is the most oppressive class will identify as anything other than that, right? As anything but what they are. 
like some of these music- musicians like Demi Lo- Lovato or um, Sam Sm- Smith, is Sam it? Smith, I, yeah. I, I don't know, yeah. right? So these are celebrities that yeah. out of nowhere have decided that they're non-binary, which is fine because I agree with, like you, you just said, people can do whatever they want. I don't care. But the problem is that they're making it seem like there's any meaning behind this. Also, they're pushing this idea that being non-binary or, or some other identity is so difficult in America. I, I can't speak for other countries, but in this country, I mean, what rights don't I have? Yet we constantly hear trans, the trans activists saying that, you know, trans rights are human rights, that I don't have rights, that, you know, you are more privileged than I am. I, I mean, it's just, um, again, it all goes back to, well, what do you believe? Do you believe that there are men and women, or do you believe that there are men that, uh, or do you believe that there is a group of people that can identify as whatever they want, and that's what makes them a man or woman? Right. And it's all socially constructed, mm-hmm. and you, yeah. you said you can identify as anything you want.